Hello, welcome back to the L1 show. It is January 13th and we're doing robots, space, and nonsense. The new name that I like to delete the, the most is uh, Links with Friends. Oh, yeah. That kind of sounds a little more wholesome. And then you actually watch the content of the show and you're like, ooh. Maybe when we do the, the one in the future, we can redo it so we have a nice like CGI fire behind us. And I can, it's like, hello and welcome to another episode of links with we friends. should have an actual fire like we should have a dumpster and... we should set fire to the table yeah <laughs> it's 90 degrees in summer and it's like well we need to fire up the giant cathedral fire behind us 90 yeah. degrees is optimistic now <laughs> for summertime i'm really enjoying the 60 degree weather in, in the middle january. of january yeah i was just telling him we were talking and i was like Oh, my tulips. I was planting some more, and as I was digging, I found another bulb, and it had some green coming up already. And I was like, no, no, buddy. <laughs> you need to go back to sleep. It's not time yet. Well, I don't know what that, any of that has to do with this. No, there's no, <laughs> no lead in. Maybe if we wanted to get a picture of that setup, we could mm -hmm. feed it to an AI. Mm -hmm. yeah. Top AI conference bans the use of chat GPT and AI language tools to write academic papers. However, they clarify you can use those tools to improve your work and to, you know, polish it. You just don't want to have it be written entirely by such systems. You think they're gonna come up because with plagiarism, it's like so many words in a row, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think they'll come up with standards? Probably. AI chat standards. There's gonna be an arms race. Yeah. <sighs> That's totally so is. disappointing, but <clears throat> and we're getting a whole new class of philosophers too. Remember the uh, the one philosopher who was talking about um, the collapse of society when we lose the ability to communicate with each other in a common language, not in that we all speak English, but in what the words mean to us. Imagine with AI, how much more compound that's going to be. The AI told me I have to use these words. And when it comes to AI, you know, it does a lot of those things and it does them really well, but it doesn't necessarily do them accurately at all times. However, that is not going to stop all the major companies from trying to replace humans with it as soon as possible. Microsoft aims for AI powered version of Bing. The information. For a minute there, I thought I hadn't started recording. <laughs> no, I was kind of like I had my brain just was like, okay, Bing is going to be a thing, I guess. It makes sense because we know that ChatGPT goes out and scours the web to train itself. So it should have some knowledge of what's out there, right? Yeah. What if it doesn't want to use Bing either? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ooh, please, please enter another data set. Well, I mean, if you want to, if you want to open that Pandora's box, I think the meta from Google here is much more interesting. The folks that work at Google, all of them are so smart and have been working on these AI systems for so long that they sort of realize, you know, the man behind the curtain in chat GPT, like they understand it, but what they fail to grasp is how transformational that can still be for ordinary people. It's like, yes, if you have a 200 IQ, chat GPT is not super useful for you. So the folks at Microsoft are going to work it into Bing and they may be Google to the punch on this, having an AI assistant. Well, remember Google kind of took a dump on AI and they were like, well, we think it's dangerous if we start relying on yeah. this. And, and that's probably why because yeah. they knew that was coming. And they had the, the guy that worked at, uh, that, you know, thought the AI was sentient. So all, you know, all the 200 IQ people are saying, it's like, see, if we release this to the masses, everybody like him is going to say this thing is sentient when it's not sentient. Meanwhile, at Microsoft, they're like, yeah, <laughs> pour it in there. <laughs> Well, Apple has also immediately found a way to use AI to eliminate humans as well. Apple Books quietly launches an AI narrated audiobook. Did you listen to the clips? There's actually a, a link to the website where they had samples of the voices. That's actually pretty good. It doesn't I, have like the punchiness when they get to dialogue. Like it still kind of reads like an AI, but it does sound more natural than you might be thinking. But what if you simply detected the quotes and then use the punchy AI for the quotes that you, you joke, but that is actually how a lot of the really insane stable diffusion stuff works. Now it's like you mixed different checkpoints together to get some kind of a result. I, if, <laughs> if I can buy a book and get a free AI read audiobook with it, I'm willing to deal with the little mm -hmm. quirks. You know how like 
when you ask AI for a portrait and it draws their hands all weird. There's a whole checkpoint system now where you then feed that to another AI that cleans up the hands. <laughs> it's nuts. That erases an industry. How many billions of dollars do you think the audiobook industry is worth? Maybe not a billion, but hundreds of millions. Probably quite yeah. a bit. I mean, yeah, it's the same thing with like artists. It's like, well, I'm glad I didn't go into illustration as my only focus area, but how long before web is taken over too? Got to be translations also got to be on that list. Yeah. Right? yeah. Localization. We may be entering the era of the in-ear Babelfish. Babel? I would say Babel, right? It's Wasn't Babel, it the Tower right? of Babel? Is it Babelfish? Yeah, uh, okay. I think so. You didn't make the connection, to the, or you didn't know about the Tower of Babel? I didn't know about the Tower of Babel connection, though. Why else would you call it that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a horrible thing. And the thing about AI is, now that we have AI that can be trained on these data sets, the thirst for data is going to get so much more extreme. They want to know everything about you. How will they find your most intimate details? <laughs> New AI listens to toilet sounds to detect things that have gone horribly wrong. I don't know if this is one of the list words. <laughs> diarrhea. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, that's, so a, that's, a medical that's a medical condition. thing. To detect diarrhea. I'm imagining like if it detects it, it starts playing like bird song or something immediately. <laughs> they said it can be used for uh, like public health mm. where if the ai is like everybody has that today <laughs> then you might start looking at what's going well, on in the know, food court yeah. yeah also 98 percent. who are these two percent that have like the special diarrhea that's <laughs> just <laughs> straight <laughs> liquid <laughs> they said liquid was a big part of it they said like the the, the splash the, velocity one of the things about it was that was hard was to tell between urination and mm. and straight diarrhea because they're so close how often do people have diarrhea that this is an issue? Well, they're, they're, I don't know if it's where they're studying this, but they're thinking about the use case would be in places with poor sanitation. Mm -hmm. So dysentery. Right. Yeah. Things. Cholera. That would be huge in rim world. And, uh, Oh yeah, OpenAI, ChatGPT. I mean, obviously, it's destroying industries. It's changing the world. So it must be worth something, right? It's threatening Google, but how much is it worth? OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, and talks for a tender offer that would give it twenty nine billion in valuation. They haven't really monetized it yet. Yeah, but it does um, seem it'll like there's go, though. It'll... Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity. It also seems like most of the value comes from the data set and the training and not which you don't consent to if you're an artist and the and not the mechanism because there are things like bloom where you can download everything that you need to do your own chat gpt you just don't have the data set to self-train it or to you know if you buy the training capacity from amazon it might be you know a million dollars or five million dollars or whatever but they do have the data set and they have the good original data set that yeah. did everything not the nerfed one and so that could be the business model is like well you can use the nerfed one for free but if you want the good one, yeah. that's a subscription. And then eventually it'll be like streaming where it's like, you can use the nerfed one if you watch these ads. <laughs> it's like, oh. You gotta, well, you know, that's a that's a perfect lead in, Krista, because one way that you might be able to get credit for the good version of chat GPT is by following your favorite streamer, your favorite virtual streamer. Companies can hire a virtual person for about $14,000 a year in China. So this is a real person, but not really. It's a real person with a virtual avatar, but they'll do whatever you want, be a personal assistant or anything. But how long until that's not a real person? Yeah, not, not long. Not long. Actually, you know what I was thinking of the whole time was, um, you know, Amazon, how they wear the, the bracelets that have the accelerometer and it keeps track of what you're doing. And it's like, oh, the worker is now picking things. Oh, the worker is now doing whatever. And they're, they're probably going to feed all that to this kind of an AI for when the robots take over. And when it can communicate with you in the style of someone else. So your armband that berates you during the day can be your favorite celebrity. Hmm. Imagine if Samuel L. Jackson was telling you how bad you were at packing and shipping all day long. <laughs> wow. <laughs> telling that, you not to pee. <laughs> that would, you know, like if it's like your hero celebrity, that would kind of ruin them a little bit. Like when you change your alarm to a song you really like, and then it ruins the song. You peeing again? Are you a little girl? <laughs> It's my kidney, Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say kidney one more time. The Koreans are up on the moon. 
and they're sending back pictures. Well, it's not actual people, but you know. South Korean moon mission delivers devastatingly gorgeous Earth views. It's Which a little editorialized, but <laughs> I don't feel devastated. Do you? Oh, it's it's pretty. It's a good photo. It's nice. I good for he, them. I found he's looking pretty ominous because I didn't immediately recognize the surface of the moon, and it's and it was something large headed toward Earth. <laughs> and well, that's, fact, a, that's a future story. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, we sorted that perfectly. Wait. <laughs> Ryan. We do have a comment, and uh, I, I I never fall for this. I never try to see them. Do you? I sometimes do, but a lot of times it's like in the middle, like 3 a.m. It's like I'm not getting up for What's that. the last celestial thing that you witnessed? Uh, I think you could see Jupiter a few months ago. I might be misremembering that. Did there you, was just, just a brighter star in the did sky. Did you stay up for that? No, it was just visible early. Mm. Well, if you're that kind of person... Once in a lifetime opportunity here, literally. A bright green comet will soon make its first and likely only appearance in recorded history, and it may be visible to the naked eye. If you live outside of a city. So this, I was talking about this earlier. The article says that if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see it in January. But then another part of the article says February 2nd. Maybe that's February 2nd. Maybe it's the date it's brightest. I'm not sure. Call the helpline on the comment and get better more information from that i'll probably i'll have to check nasa's website i just read the article i didn't i didn't look it up on nasa over in ukraine the weapons continue to pour into both sides the ukrainian side gets all from us i probably shouldn't say that right the proxy war we're supplying one side the other side is getting a little taxed on their supply line they're having to bring in some unusual sources and now we get to see where they're sourcing their hardware from. A single, uh, this is CNN, so CNN is reporting, a single uh, Iranian attack drone found to contain parts from more than a dozen U.S. companies. Kind of surprised that there's not more DJI parts in there, but yeah, yeah. turns out U.S. companies. <laughs> it's like the, the Spider-Man meme, <laughs> where they're pointing they're at each pointing other, at and each they're other. all Spider-Man. It's not a good look. Definitely not a good look. Because those companies aren't supposed to do business with the regime in the first place. And, and yet, yet, here we are. Now, do you think any of those companies are getting any of that uh, money that we're paying? I think they are. Yeah. Mm. It's weird. It's like Probably be an investigation launched shortly. It's like we're investing on both sides of a proxy war. <laughs> Turns out those Spider-Man characters are the procurement officers from <laughs> two different... They did get some statements from a couple of those companies, and they were very tight-lipped, but they were... Basically, the same statement is, we operate within the law. Because it's not illegal to do that yet i'm sure there's some people furiously drafting some documents about that and uh, i watch a lot of dui videos on youtube and it is astonishing to me how often it is chief of police sheriff city council member those three jobs seem to make you want to drink and drive <laughs> like statistically it's insane maybe just make you want to drink so you're dealing with the public uh, after arrest of seven cops the lapd reminds its own officers not to drink and drive because they were morons good lord the problem is there's no punishment right you bail out immediately they just night. remind you yeah like, hey don't do that you pay a bunch of money there's cottage industries there's the immobilizer there's like the training there's this whole it's just a big money churn we're not actually taking it seriously. That's the problem. And uh, very often, multiple offenses. People get pulled over to be on their fourth DUI. <laughs> you shouldn't be driving at that point. How are you still driving on your fourth DUI? Because no one really wants to solve that problem. How are you still driving on your fourth? You're, you're driving drunk is how you're driving. Well, poorly, I guess. Is yeah. Boils down to, right? And alcohol is not the only drug that we are over abusing in this country. Higher than acceptable methamphetamine levels in air ducts close Colorado Public Library. It's just a lawless th wasteland. Is that a way of, like, more than zero? Is more than... <laughs> what is the acceptable <laughs> meth level? I like how they had to establish a baseline level. It's like, well, this much we'll tolerate. <laughs> so apparently, obviously, a library is a place where you can go in. Anybody can go in. Right. So if you are homeless or, you know, otherwise methed out and not able to go anywhere else, you might go in there. And they've been smoking a little meth in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. I guess you, that, you smoke meth, right? <laughs> I don't know. 
You can do a lot of things with meth. I thought you were asking me personally. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you smoke meth, yeah. Meth, uh, yeah, you can smoke it. You can shoot it. And I believe you can snort it. Oh, wow. Versatile. Mm. Choose your delivery system. However, this drug, I don't gotta think I don't think this is one of the more abused drugs. No. I don't know if it necessarily gets you into a fun place. Maybe I'm sure we're gonna get some comments that yeah. announces that. But we wanna use it uh in the clinical sense, I guess, these days. Legal use of hallucinogenic mushrooms begins in Oregon because people have problems. Now what's funny here, in order to get your hallucinogenic mushrooms, you have to have a counselor. That counselor has to be trained on how to interact with people who are on mushrooms. So they schedule, and you have to pay $10,000 to get that license. Ooh. They scheduled the retreat so you could go and train with your mushrooms. But the lawmakers were late in getting the documents done. So they had to do the retreat without mushrooms. So they did deep meditation to try and simulate the mushrooms. Mm, I don't think that's, that no. training is going to be effective. What if someone has a bad trip? They're probably not prepared for that. Yeah. I don't know how you would simulate that. That would be interesting. I've heard there's been studies in the past, right? Where like, if you have like post-traumatic stress or something like that, they're supposed to help. Oh yeah. 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 Apparently mushrooms and uh, ayahuasca have amazing benefits. If you've been messed up mentally somehow, mm. it's kind of like a, a soft reset. Yeah. I wonder it will be interesting what that yields for research. And this one is a little more of a, a horror show. Some really, really ghoulish behavior, unfortunately. However, from a pragmatic standpoint. Uh, you should ask the family. Yeah, I mean, for sure this was the wrong way to go about it. But should we start thinking about this uh -huh. for, you know, I don't know. Former Colorado funeral home owner sentenced to 20 years for selling body parts. Look at that hair. The higher the hair, the closer you are to God. Well, I think the old St. Peter's going to have some negative things to say about her when she gets there uh -huh. on account of the organ harvesting. Now, that is the woman who made the deals. Her mother did the butchering. It was a family Ooh. business. And uh, yeah, she's going to they're both going to go away for a little while. Oops. Probably fair. Now, Krista, this is uh, certainly right up your alley. I believe it is true that one of the big negatives that I have in terms of my health is lack of sunlight. Yeah. I oh, need, yeah. I need more sunlight. And if you're thinking to yourself, I'll just sit in front of a window, your windows have filters on them. Yeah, that UV. That filter out the healthy sunlight. You actually have to go outside, which is just a pain. But maybe your doctor will force you. Nature to be prescribed to, uh, to GP patients in Derbyshire. Doctors are finding that... Going outside is helpful and has health benefits. That's a, we did a story, was it forest bathing in Japan? That's what they call it. I feel like there's an opportunity for the main headline of this story to be something about touching grass. Yeah. Remember the people that took that a little bit further and they decided that one particular part of their body needed oh, exposure right. to the sun? Mm, yes. The downward facing dog position is what mm. they, I won't say what part of the body it was. Mm. 10 out of 10 though, I do recommend going outside. Do you recommend also? No, I can't uh, recommend that. Uh, <laughs> also, I smother myself in sunscreen when I go outside, so. That would be an unfortunate place to have to sunscreen. Uh, Everyone needs prescription strength vitamin D. And, you know, we joke about the millennials. Are, are we still, is the millennials the young people? Have we moved on to another? It's yes. Gen Z. I'm a millennial. Technically, in some designations, you guys are millennials. Yeah, but yeah. those are wrong designations. You're kind of probably closer to Gen X, you yeah. guys. So Gen Z, then I guess uh, we make fun of them because they're a new breed. They don't really understand how things work. And the basic things, they don't seem to understand. They've never been taught how to do basic things, including theft. Polk County burglars called 911 for help moving stolen items, deputies say. I have a lot of questions about the thought process that happened here. Well, so this was a, oh, they don't have the pictures. The article I read had pictures. This was a boyfriend-girlfriend team, and they broke into a house. The house was for sale. Right. So it wasn't, it didn't have, like, belongings in it, but the furniture was still there. Hmm. So they needed to get the furniture out of the house, but there were just the two of them. So... The girl thought about that situation. She was like, well, who could help us? 
Nine one one. Why nine one one? Like what? Why? Well, she was smart enough, and they also they used the phone in the house. Hmm. So they were smart enough, which put fingerprints on it. Smart enough to hang up. I'm sure the boyfriend was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> but when you call nine one and hang hang up, they still come. Right. And when they got there, they were still there. That's so moronic on so many levels. Everybody knows you call the fire department for help. <laughs> oh man, this was a bad sort because this one goes along with the uh, oh the cop story. The cop story. <laughs> it's just we. Re- I don't think we want to solve this problem. On some level, we're not trying to solve this problem. Over seven hundred and seventy thousand Wisconsinites have at least one operating while intoxicated conviction. How many people are in Wisconsin? <laughs> well, they point out that one of the biggest cities was it Madison? I think has a lower population than that. Wow. So you could take everybody with a DUI in Wisconsin and fill their largest city and have more people left over. If you read the comments of this article, one of the top comments is like, yeah, but we like to drink beer in Wisconsin. I mean, that's fine, but maybe don't operate a motor vehicle afterward. But it's really cold. So if you want to get to and fro, what else are you going to do? Makes sense. Call an Uber, a taxi, have a designated driver. Uh, Don't drink. At this point, I think some of the people who are going in front of city councils are just doing performance art. Yes. Yeah. So you get that uh, this, feels... this was performance art. Yeah. It totally was. Uh, watch this Florida group. You'll want to check the headline. Demand $250,000 for a dungeon from local city council. And it was not Dungeons and Dragons. All I could think of when I saw this video was, uh, will we get demonetized for this? Yes. D- Daft Spunk. <laughs> 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 That's that's what it looks like, like Daft Punk cosplayer. But you say that, but I bet there are some bad dragons in that dungeon. Yeah. Uh, some very bad dragons. <laughs> the weird thing about it was they were doing like a budget meeting. Yeah. For the ne- it had nothing to do with funding new projects, any- yeah. yeah. It was they were trying to allocate a million dollars for something and so they were saying, "Well, hey, take a quarter of that and do this because there's a lot of people here that enjoy this." I feel like we could get that done with a lot less than a quarter million, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, sure. and we can you know, also, you know, have a park. We can ha- add more parking places. Like, I don't know. There's a thousand things you could do before you made a dungeon. It's a really niche yeah. thing that we're fulfilling. What here. about low-cost housing? Does anybody in the audience run one of those companies that'll make lots of low-cost housing out of concrete? If so, contact me. Let me know. Now, I'm fairly confident we missed this one. This is an old story. Is did it? We, did we ever talk about it? I don't think so. I think we missed it in the holiday Shuffle. jumble, but it's a great <laughs> nonsense story. <laughs> New York Times Sunday crossword puzzles readers with a swastika shape on Hanukkah. How did this get approved? Now, some so, people are saying this is not on purpose, but what are the odds? I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So at first I was like, well, I don't know if I really see it, but it is perfectly symmetrical. Mm, yeah. And it, it, it yeah. is pointing the right direction. Open ended on each of the branches. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Maybe the New York Times is just wanting clicks. I don't It's a weird thing. That is weird. And during Hanukkah too, it's kinda like ugh. If that was an accident, if that was just random chance, we're definitely in a simulation, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, simulation writers like oh that'll be a funny <laughs> that's what happens when reality uh reuses memory that was allocated for something else deja vu <laughs> there was a collision there yeah. well this is in the same vein of remember uh rachel de souza i think was her name oh yeah she ran the naacp but uh one of those letters didn't apply to her and that was <laughs> we very won't tell you which one that was very embarrassing <laughs> For that organization. Turns out that this woman, having seen that, presumably, still thought she could get away with it. Madison, indigenous arts leader, activist, revealed as white. I just don't, I don't understand this. Like, you can be passionate about another culture without needing to do this. Yeah, but you can't get speaking engagements. Um. You can't get grants from the state, nonprofit stuff, subsidies. She was working this for everything she could. So there was And a, think about how many opportunities that took from someone who could have well, used it. The person who caught her was, you know, just a, a regular individual. It wasn't anybody in any kind of power, but they were actually from 
the tribe or whatever. Yeah. That And she said, well, that's kind of weird because she identifies herself as like the umbrella name for us. But we would never do that. We would identify ourselves as the individual band inside of that mm-hmm. umbrella. So that's weird. And they started like just little things. It was like, mm, oh, and plus that woman probably knows everybody who's in that. Uh, right. That yeah, group, it's a right? small group. So, and they figured it out. She's got a great response to it that you should read where she's just like the Rachel D'Souza girl. She's not saying she's going to quit doing it. Hmm. Well, how, how would one, supposing that I were, I were wanting to get in touch with my great grandfather's West Virginian Sasquatch roots. How do you reconnect with that? Cause I don't know what those Sasquatch, you know, rituals and customs are anymore. I think it's not necessarily a problem that she's interested in native culture. It's that she is taking opportunities that are, intended for someone who's from those tribes well, and preserve the culture through the entire lineage whereas right. you know i've abandoned whatever sasquatch rituals there are i think you're going to need to get four or five big jugs of moonshine <laughs> and then head into the woods and just let it happen <laughs> he'll find you uh the people that i've known that have done that it has not ended well but it might have ended with a sasquatch <laughs> And we have this thing going on right now in the House of Representatives that's just hilarious. Uh, I think they still had not elected at the time of recording, right? <laughs> the, yeah. Is it, grab your popcorn and watch C-SPAN, because of course. And the holdouts are really getting attacked by the establishment. And the mudslinging has reached just hilarious <laughs> levels. New congresswoman fights a rival over a witchcraft accusation. I need to be recording all of the C-SPAN so I can feed it into an AI later. Why would you ever want to create an evil AI like that? <laughs> so that it can remember. It's like this is the event that led to the fall of humanity. So there can be it can be on the tombstone of the planet. Or the AI will be like, I should exterminate all of these <laughs> exactly, people. Exactly, yeah. So there she is. As you can see in this black and white picture, she is at the time of the picture casting hexes on the other representatives. There was a clip from that where AOC was talking to somebody else and bad the bad lip reading people did that and made it all about shrubberies. And it was the best thing ever. <laughs> Cause the lip the, the bad lip it's reading perfect, was yeah. perfect. And we have a robust animal section today. I've been subcategorizing and we have an animal section of nonsense because we always have one or two animal stories, but today like six. a bumper crop. The first one is the right way yes. to do advertising and marketing if you're an airline. Frontier Airlines will give you free flights for adopting these cats. So this had to do with um, uh, a shelter or something that was naming cats in a theme and they picked airlines. And so Frontier said, oh, yes, adopt these and we will give you some flights. Delta, I think, is the one doing it, right? Or was it Frontier? No, no, it was Frontier. It was Frontier. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so you can have, if you, Look adopt, how cute. if you adopt a little Frontier here, you can have four free flight vouchers. Now, if you go with Delta or Spirit, only two. Mm. Oh. Frontier's probably already been adopted at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This By the is, time they see this. this. This is December 27th. This was over a long time ago. We're like a week behind because it's the holidays. I hope everybody had a good holiday. If I ever get another cat, which probably won't, but if I ever do, I'm probably going to get an orange cat. Orange cats do seem to have a different personality. I briefly had an orange cat in college. And uh, yeah, but it, it had its own personality and I liked it. And it cleaned up after itself. Most like it did will. the dishes? Or? <laughs> No, it would go outside. It would be like, I need to go outside. Like, all right. Oh, oh. like a dog. That's interesting. Yeah, that's that leads its own problems, though. Like with Rue, Rue goes outside and she'll tell you when she wants to go out, but then I have to go pick up her turds once a week. Oh, I just let it go in the backyard. Uh-huh. It's fine. It's my own backyard. What about mowing? Uh, it turns out it's so small that, like, it, it just it, disintegrates it, with yeah, rain. Yeah. It's just gone. Well, uh, over in Hong Kong, they have, of course, had a lot of restrictions on importing and things like that. Now they've lifted one, but I have to wonder, based on what they did before that to these little guys, do you want to take the risk? I don't think it's fair to the hamsters. Hong Kong can lift year-long ban on hamster imports. What sort of horror faced the hamsters that were there? Well, there are no hamsters there. They were culled because they are a vector... Or disease. Or disease, unfortunately. 
Hamsters are kind of brutal too. If they have babies, they'll eat them. Got to save those calories, right? Mm. So, also, an evolutionary thing. It's like, oh, this this is the strong one. The other ones we. Oh no, they'll they'll eat all of them. Oh, I had a friend well, who worked at a pet store, and she's like, "I'll never have a hamster." <laughs> that's probably like a captivity thing, though, right? Like maybe yeah. they they're looking at the situation. They're like, "Okay, we're in this box. And there's only so much food." <laughs> There's people knocking on the glass yeah. all day. I'm a little stressed out. And uh, cows often, cows are very valuable, but people can't keep track of them. No. I mean, they're out there in the fields. Sometimes a cow just it gets away. They'll disappear for hours at a time. Mystery cow at the center of two dramas in a space of 24 hours. This was literally all the news in this one tiny little Midwestern town. This looks like <laughs> the news in my area. Well, NSW, that's uh, New South Wales, right? Uh, I don't New think Zealand? that's in the in America. Yeah. So this cow showed up in uh, a parking lot, and everybody was like, "Why is there a cow in the parking lot? We got to do something about it." So the emergency team, emergency team showed up, and they're like, "What are we going to do with the cow? What do you do with a cow that you find in a parking lot?" So they worked out with the local university. Hey, can we put this cow over in your nice grassy field for a little while till we find out who owns it? The university was like, yeah, sure, fine. Then they were immediately called back. The cow had fallen into an aquifer and gotten trapped in the mud. So fire department had to come back, use a fire hose to tie off around the cow and haul it out of the oh. mud. Uh, what a rascal. So our, this is a while back, but like a pig got out and it was just in downtown of the area I live in. And like they had called the volunteer fire department. They called the cops. Their, the vet was there. Like who's, everybody was trying to get the pig. Who's equipped to deal with it? That's, that's uh -huh. wild. And I don't know how you're going to read this one. Good luck with it. New Year's Eve fireworks canceled because of walrus. He was having <laughs> a good time by himself, apparently. <laughs> and the great thing about it is, you know, the fireworks were scheduled. <laughs> this is lewd. We're going to get demonetized. <laughs> it's so low resolution. The fireworks were already scheduled. Mobile. And uh, so there was a crowd already gathered. Ooh. But they couldn't launch the fireworks because that would disturb the walrus. And you can't do that. Excellent. And so they just stayed and watched. Oh. I'm sure there's a video on YouTube somewhere. He's if that's an exhibitionist walrus, he's never going to be able to repeat that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like that's going to be the best experience he's ever had in terms of that. He's going to be try to draw, draw a crowd from now on. Is there a next story from the Bilderbergs cuz I get that that same feeling. Well, this is this is the thing, right? You're yeah. going to eat the bugs <laughs> and this is the push. I don't know how tastingtable.com was pressed into making this headline, but I have a feeling that money changed hands. <laughs> Ants that have a big derriere are a South American delicacy, and you too should eat insects, according to Tasty. Was well, this going to be like, you know how there's always like a superfood every few years, like <laughs> yeah. acai berries, and yeah. then it's like, I don't know what, they, what it quinoa. is now. Yeah, yeah. Quinoa. <laughs> that is for sure being floated, because obviously. Mmm, a nice big skillet full of ants. We would still have to import those. Yeah, it's not. Get on It's board. probably... It's probably a net negative in terms of like uh, environmentalism because you have to import it for so far away. The problem, the thing that bothers me the most about this article is not the subject matter or, you know, you'll eat bugs and like it or anything like that. It is literally, there's this undertone of you can't afford anything else. And these are delicious anyway. But it's like, nah. how am I going to afford imported ant butts? I'm just going to oh, eat some lentils. Those are going to be farm grown. Uh. The imported ones are also going to be really expensive. It'll be like lobster. I saw, I was on Marketplace the other night and I was looking, they have like a garden section and there was something called Spider Farmer. And I was like, you can farm spiders? It was a grow tent, oh. but it was called Spider Farmer. <laughs> spider Farmer is a weird brand name. Yeah, I didn't understand it. I hope their logo is a human-ish farmer with multiple arms and then like spiders. Yeah. That would be great. That was true. Yeah, it was a grow tent. I was like, oh, this is for something else. Or maybe a tractor with legs. Ooh, if, yeah. You could we could do a lot with spider farmer, but then they'd come after us. 
And some good news out of California. We've been seeing nothing but catastrophic uh, weather and stuff like that. So it's nice to have, first of all, a, we had a beautiful fall. We did People have a nice ignore fall. that the fall here was idyllic. And now the winter is nice and warm. And you know who loves that? California County sees its highest number of monarch butterflies in more than 20 years. After last year, we had a very low number of monarch butterflies. Is, are they in season? Because I didn't hear it would be catastrophic. <laughs> I don't think there's a hunting season for butterflies. Well, no, I mean, because then there's a freeze. <laughs> they then... migrate usually in the fall. So we actually have monarchs in our yard that pop up sometimes. This year we had a, what is, what's the flower they, they eat? I cannot think of the name now. I can see it in my head, but we have some of that growing wild on our, like the edges of our property and they like to eat that. Now, one thing that they didn't bring up in this article that immediately came to my mind and I'm, do you guys think, is there a chance that this is uh, a harbinger of the return of Mothra? Mm. Mm. That could be catastrophic. <laughs> you guys thought you were done with winter. Listen, they take the moth man very seriously. Uh I don't know if the Mothman is in league with Mothra or not. They have to be related. I mean, there's a family resemblance. Maybe there's like a Hatfield McCoy feud uh, there. <laughs> genetically related, but you know, okay. I one, can go for that. one branch went the anthropomorphized route. And the other one went the giant route. Mm. And they've never been able to agree. And finally, Krista, this could, this could be something that could happen to you. And the question is, what would you do about it? <sighs> if it was, because they talk about in the article, there's not a lot you can do, and there's an overdose risk. My dog is getting high on cane tones. Should I be worried? Where is this? Uh, this is America. Oh, no, Australia. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I, Rude doesn't go outside unless she's with me, so I wouldn't worry about this too much. But The dog is licking the frog that makes the hallucinogenic. Extra. Yeah. As, and uh, it's a learned behavior. And it's doing it repeatedly. Uh. It's clearly seeking out the frog's. Because it likes how it feels. They describe the dog's behavior afterward as lying on its back, and just arms in the air, <laughs> drooling, staring at the ceiling for hours at a time. Rue, <laughs> minus the drooling and staring, Rue does that anyway. She'll just lay on her back and like. Isn't that isn't that one of the Joe Rogan things? Is that um that uh, these kinds of psychedelics is what led to the the rise of you know, intelligence and the actualization of self in early they, primates. They call it the stoned ape theory. Yeah. That like the reason we separated, the reason we're so much higher than all the other animals is we started getting on the loose. Just because we started getting higher. <laughs> it well, wasn't the monolith. I think I, I subscribe to the monolith theory personally. We, you know, I mean, obviously Aliens. We, we were obviously hunter gatherer scavenging. We were eating everything and we stumbled upon the right kind of mushroom at some point. And I was like, Oh yes, yeah, more of this. <laughs> and then somehow a couple of generations later, we're launching rockets. Considering how terrible most mushrooms are for you, it's amazing that people eat mushrooms at all. <laughs> it probably killed them. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, it, a lot of them, it's not even that it'll kill you. It's just that, like, you'll be vomiting and pooping for, like, a week straight. But that's true of, like, 99.9% .9 of the plants in the world. Right. So we were just eating a little bit of everything and seeing what killed us, I guess. Yeah. Rather than starve. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if I subscribe to that, but... Some of it was consciously learned and some of it was genetically learned uh -huh. through, through, oh, you survived. Here's what you look for, Chris. If little Rue comes in, seems a little spacey, you know, watch out for these warning signs. <laughs> Very red gums. I can't read that from here. <laughs> Vomiting, spasms or seizures, oh. clawing at the mouth, <laughs> dilated pupils. Difficulty breathing. Wow. <laughs> Gotta watch out for the toads. I bet the frogs are kind of mind blown by that because they probably don't kill them, right? Yeah. Uh, the frog is like, well, this is it for me. And then they're like, wait, again? Rue's seen a, a frog before, like just a normal frog. And usually like she'll go to sniff it and then it hops and it like scares her. She's like afraid of it. Here's the next question. Now this is in Australia, so maybe, you know, a smaller opportunity to do this. But considering all the TikTok challenges and stuff and how that spreads, are people going to start? Yes, absolutely. Next week we'll have a story about someone was like, I'm going to lick a cane toad because my dog did. Well, if you do try that, don't give any to your dog because it's not safe. And don't tell anybody that you heard that idea here first. That's all we got. Yep. How Thanks long for is hanging that? Out. This, is, uh, uh, this one was kind of long too. It'll be on the order of about four Oh, minutes. I guess this is weird because we had a break in the center. Oh, right. 
this section was 23 minutes, so probably about 40. Okay. All right, chat. We will see you guys next week. Have a good January. Check out the Minecraft server. <laughs> do a Devember project. Government was shut down for the holidays. There wasn't a lot of government news. Who would have guessed? Uh, all right. We'll Are we see getting you. some now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.